the deputy president william samoe ruto is a man under siege he is under siege because president uhuru mwai kenyatta for the first time announced publicly that he was not going to endorse him for the presidency in 2022 remember the deputy president since the year 2011 up to now had actually pegged his 2022 presidential bid on the support of president uhuru mwai kenyatta and those problems are not ending there beginning next week his key allies are going to be targeted for removal from key parliamentary committees in the national assembly under the senate for example there are plans to kick out kipchumba murkomen as the majority leader at the senate and there are also plans to kick out ben washali as the majority whip at the national assembly and also kick out kimbani ishungwa as the chair of the budget committee in the national assembly and that means basically that the deputy president is a man under siege but the question is what next for the deputy president especially after the betrayal by president uhuru mwai kenyatta what next for him so today i want us to look at the options available for the deputy president william samoe ruto but before we do that if you are bumping on this video for the first time i want you to just do i just want you to take a second or two and hit the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this you get notified now back to the main issue back to the main issue what next for the deputy president william samoe ruto we know for a fact that today the deputy president william ruto is in kisi county but when the deputy president is in kisi he's a troubled man he's a troubled man because for the last three days president uhuru mwai kenyatta has camped in central kenya and he has not camped in central kenya to support the president his deputy i mean to support his deputy he is there to destroy his deputy and his allies and we've seen in those last three days we've seen even the allies of the deputy president being kicked out of the presidential function we've seen in those three days president uhuru mwai kenyatta referring to his deputy as hayena and while the dp is in kisi today the president is also hosting fred matiangi who also who, was, who is likely to be a key player political player in kisi the president is hosting him today in kiambu county and just like i keep on saying on this platform in politics everything is planned to happen like that the plan to ensure that matiangi is in kiambu with the president was actually intended to achieve certain political objectives but what can the deputy president do because as things stand today the president has decided he is not going to support the dp and as things also stood by yesterday or by before the president embarked on his journey to destroy the dp in central kenya it was clear that the dp had also banked on the support of the president since the year 2011 up to today what next for him in my view the deputy president has the following options these are the only options for him option number 1 the first thing he must do is that the deputy president must as a matter of urgency consolidate his support base you can't go to a war without a solid support base and luckily for the deputy president he has the college in support behind him but this rift valley which is big and there's the threat posed by Gideon Moy so if you look at the the counties in a uh, rift valley then you break those figures how how they performed in 2013 and 2017 and how the deputy president is likely to perform in 2022 then the deputy president is disadvantaged despite the fact that he comes from rift valley why am i saying this Let's just use statistics first. Let's go I'm just going to give you example of four counties. In Laikipia county they had around 339 registered voters. Uhuru Kenyatta got 
They had 239. Uru Kenyatta got 177,000 votes in 2017. 177,000. Raila got around 20,000. Remember in Laikipia, there is a significant number of Kikuyus in Laikipia. Which means if, if Uru will in, convince the Kikuyus in central Kenya otherwise, then that impact, that will translate, will impact on this number. So which means the DP will not be able to get 177,000 in Laikipia. Let's go to Nakuru. In Nakuru, they had around 949, I mean, 948,000 registered voters, almost a million. And Uru Kenyatta, in 2017, August, got 639,000 votes from Nakuru County. Raila Odinga got, I think, 108. So 639 votes. Kikuyu, I mean, Nakuru is predominantly Kikuyus. So it means if Uru will convince them in central Kenya, that will translate down here, and the DP Ruto will not get these votes. Now, let's go again. There is Kajiado. And I'm going to explain to you why Kajiado. In Kajiado, they have uh, around 409 registered voters. Uru got 326. 326,000 votes. And Raila Odinga, 186. I think there, 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 was, there might have been a problem here. I don't know who, who won the presidential, the presidential votes in, in, uh, in Kajiado. But let's say Uru got 326. If Uru got 326, it means that the DP will not get that because Kajiado, there's also high presence of Kikuyus. And because Raila Odinga got high number there, those were basically the Masai's because Raila won the Masai votes both in Kajiado and Narok. The same translates also to, Na to Narok County. So it means the DP, as a matter of urgency, should suspend some of this charm offensive is engaging in other places and consolidate Rift Valley. And he can do what we used to do. Kamatusa, Kalenjins, Masai, Turkana, and Samburu. Because even in Turkana voted for Raila Odinga, defeated them in Turkana. He, they need to consolidate. He needs to consolidate those Rift Valley votes first. Fully. And even convince the Kikuyus in the diaspora, the Kikuyus, Kikuyus in, uh, in Nakuru, in Laikipia, in Narok, in, Kajia, uh, in Kajiado, he must convince them that they are now part of Rift Valley. And they start viewing Ruto as a candidate of Rift Valley. Because without doing that, he's going to lose substantial number of votes. And remember, if it's true the votes were rigged last time, if it's true the votes were rigged last time, it means he must get genuine support. He must convince them. So he must go back to the drawing board, start with Kamatosa. After Kamatosa, then he can go convince the Rift Valley as a block so that he comes out as their, as their candidate. And even if it means kicking out the likes of uh, the back member of parliament, Kimani Kunchiri, because those are the people the president is now targeting. So that's the first thing. The second thing the DP must do, and I've always maintained this, is that the deputy president must create his own network, grassroots networks. You can't have support without a grassroots support. It's not enough, like for example, if he's going to kiss it the way he's go, he, he went today, give Osoro some money to mobilize for you some people, to print t-shirts, and then those people are paid to attend those rallies. He needs to have his grassroots support, such that if today the DP wants to go to Kisi, then those grassroots, let's say even 20 people per, per ward, or, or 50 people per ward, people he knows these are my supporters. Then those people can, can easily bring other 10 people, 20 people, 30 people to his events. Because without grassroots support, I can tell you, all these other supports remain temporary. And this is what Raila Odinga has always succeeded in. Today, if Raila Odinga were to go in Meru, you'll find in Meru he has someone who is his own person. Yule mutu anajua tu kwa mta, yule mutu wa Raila. So DP must develop that. And that was also sustained Raila Odinga at the cost. To an extent, when the likes of Aisha Juma left, the grassroots were able, those grassroots support, were able to repel her 
when in Kwale, uh, despite the fact that the governor is Jubilee, they have been unable to 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 deal with the ODM wave in the region because of that grassroots support. So basically, the DP, as a matter of agency, must ensure that he has grassroots support, his own grassroots support. Because as things stand today, he's depending on Jubilee structures and Jubilee party officials. Jubilee is amorphous. There's URP and there is TNA. Some of those people, their allegiance is on the other side. Number three, Number three, I think the DP must, as a matter of agency, also tame his supporters, especially, especially the members of parliament. The DP enjoys a lot of support at the Senate. He enjoys a lot of support at the National Assembly. Are those support real? Because we saw the other day they could not even save Ferdinand Waititu. They could not save Finland at the national at, at the Senate, which means at the Senate is not there. Now in the National Assembly, yes, he has those support. But can he rely on them? In my view, no. Why? If you study the history of this country, one thing is always constant that 85% of members of parliament never make it back to parliament. So if the DP is relying on uh, Didimas Baraza, is relying on Dan Wanyama. He's relying on uh, Ben Washiali. He's relying on Silvanus Osoro. How sure is he that those are the right people from where they are coming from? Take for example Jichopevu in Mombasa. If the DP were to rely on Jichopevu in Mombasa, Jichopevu is doesn't have problem with the uh, railway. Doesn't have problem with the ODM. He has maintained that severely. Jijos Pevu's problem is one. Ali Hassan Joho. What of if between today and 2017 Jijos Pevu makes up with Hassan Joho? What will happen? Look at Aisha Jumwa. Aisha Jumwa was punctured in Ganda completely. So it's, it's nowhere. And he must tame them because most of these people are poisonous. Any word they utter is not gaining the deputy president any vote. Take for example Moses Kuria. Moses Kuria is now a hero amongst his supporters, but I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Moses Kuria is trying to build his name using any other method so that he can be relevant politically speaking. What if he will change towards the end there? What will the deputy president do? So I think the deputy president must tame his MPs. People like Cherar Gay must be tamed. Because they are reckless. They are reckless in talks. They respond to everything. There are certain things you don't even need to respond to. When Ferdinand Waititu was being kicked out by the courts, and the, the, the judge in his own wisdom said, I could not, I'm not going to swear this guy today because the law is clear on the process. Because they are not gazetted it. They still went ahead the next day, these guys, and started preaching how reggae had been stopped without even thinking. That what these guys were doing, they just wanted to, to seal any loophole. Any loophole were, were being sealed so that even if someone will go to court, they can't question the process. Look at the way Susan Kehika have been uh, engaging the president. Kimani Gunjiri. So he must tame his troops and only choose, select a few to speak. I'm sure the deputy president, of, in, among the members of parliament he has, I know he has young bloods who are very energetic, but he must get someone who is level-headed. Someone who can speak as the country can listen. And lastly, I think the BBI. In my view, the Deputy President William Ruto must observe the Building Bridges Initiative from far. Let him be just a spectator. I'm saying that because the handshake, he never supported that handshake. And that handshake from the time it was formed up to today is actually what is bringing down the deputy president. Be why? Because you post it and give the president the reason. Because the president was saying, I'm supporting this handshake because of this. So instead of the deputy supporting, he started opposing it. If he had just remained silent, 
in my view, things would have been different. Look at the Building Bridges Initiative. Who are the, who are the biggest opponents of the Building Bridges Initiative? The allies of the Rifti president, to an extent that they're even forming parallel meetings without knowing that the Building Bridges Initiative is a project of President Rumuge Kenyatta. And Uhuru, while in central Kenya, announced that he was going to take personal responsibility for the Building Bridges Initiative. So if I were the deputy president or his advisor, I would advise him to monitor happenings on the Building Bridges Initiative from far. For example, he did so well in uh, Eldoret yesterday. His group never talked about this Building Bridges Initiative. They never talk politics. But he talked on certain issues which affect the country. So he can take that kind of approach. I'm going to see his message in Kisi today. But I think on the Building Bridges Initiative, that's a poisoned chalice which is being served to him. So he must avoid it completely. No comment, no sending his people. Just watch from whatever is, I mean, from, from far. Because as a matter of fact, the guys are going to achieve what they want. Whether the DP supports, whether the DP opposes. So if I were him, I would just remain silent, watch, just give my opinion. Once, then it ends there. If it's on an uh, issue of, uh, for example, regional government. Just say, we don't need this regional government because of A, B, C, D, D, D in writing. Then your point is known. Then silent. I don't know what you think, but in my view, those are the options which I think the duty president has as things stand today. Because that, the withdrawal of support from President Rumi Kenyatta has really affected his presidential bid. I know most of you might say, oh, the president doesn't command support. Those are theories. Thank you, guys. And if you are bumping on this video for the first time, just like I said, take a second or two, hit the subscribe button. And the only request I always make on this platform is for you guys to help me create interactions. How? Click thumbs up, thumbs up or thumbs down. So that if the thumbs up are up, I know the video is good. If it's, it's it down, I know there's a problem so I can work on fixing that. Thank you, guys. And you can always reach me on my WhatsApp number, which is 0777. 741323. Thank you guys and may you have a good day.